Good afternoon. Um, I am Eileen Abner of the Department of Trade and Industry uh, Public Relations Unit. Um, this afternoon, we're, we'll be discussing about how um, do we see the small medium enterprises vis-a-vis -vis the APEC, and then how does um, DTI or the government help the SMEs at the local level, mm -hmm. and how do we promote them locally and internationally? So we have with us this afternoon um, a professor from the University of the Philippines. We have with us Professor Ramon Clarete. And then we also have from the Department of Trade and Industry, Bureau of Domestic Trade Promotion. We have Director Rodora Leano. Good afternoon. And we also have from uh, the region, one of the regional directors of the Department of Trade and Industry, we have the um, OIC Regional Director of Region 6, um, Rebecca Rascon. So we will start with uh, Dr. Uh, Director Leano. Um, we have now um, some, we have seen this place in the uh, International Convention Center. Uh, so we have seen also this in the airport. We have this place of products coming from one of our regions here. So we want to um, ask you, uh, um, let um, share, share us your insights on this. And plus, share with us how do we look at it in promoting um, the products of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, our bureau, the Bureau of Domestic Trade Promotion, uh, set up these special settings. No? We have uh, several of them that now exist at the Iloilo Airport, and uh, another very small one that is within the premises of the Iloilo Convention Center. The whole idea of why we put this up no, is basically uh, just to give our foreign guests, our EPIC uh, visitors, an idea no, of what artisanal products from the Philippines are like. Uh, the original intention was to set up a trade fair, but unfortunately, did, did this, uh, this activity did not push through. And uh, we settled for uh, uh, a, a step down, a downgraded activity, and we put up these exhibits. And I have to say, you know, while uh, I am a Filipino, it has been a learning experience for me uh, when we, uh, we networked no, with uh, your local tourism uh, council the, and uh, various foundations here in, Ilo, in Ilo, Ilo City to put up those exhibits because what we wanted to feature really were the talents and the products that came from uh, Iloilo Ilo City and uh, the rest of Region 6. And uh, sort of uh, the centerpiece no, are uh, the costumes of your Dinagyang Festival. Uh, I was a little confused when we were setting it up because you have so many festivals. No, I was. So because what's the difference? Uh, I thought it was the same as mascara. I thought it was the same the same as ati atihan. And well, uh, I am very pleased that I uh, actually got educated. So we have put this up in the airport. And uh, it is uh, basically in uh, the departures area. There is a platform there where we have put up about uh, six mannequins that are dressed up. And I have to uh, thank no, the, the local tourism office as well as uh, a school. Let me uh, see my notes. Uh, that uh, lent us the costumes. And in fact, at the airport, when I arrived, I was very pleasantly surprised this afternoon. There was this gentleman, live, hindi siya manikin, who was in the Dinagyang costume. And immediately, you know, all of the tourists and even the Filipinos that were traveling to Iloilo just had to have their picture taken with him. And then over and on top of that, we also got exposed no, to your local uh, designers, no, your local artisans, one of whom is um, uh, si Mr. Fernando Cabigting. I think you are familiar with him. And I was really amazed at the products. And I was thinking, if we are, I, I myself am amazed, am amazed, then our foreign guests would be truly amazed. No? In case you're not, uh, you're not 
uh, familiar with his products. Mr. Kabigting is a painter, but he uses as his medium all of this reclaimed wood, wood that is like 200, 300 years old. And in fact, I didn't even know this. No, There's such a thing as yung parang uh, batcha. Are you familiar with that? It's a wash basin. A batcha that's about 200 or 300 years old that's made out of wood, and he's painted on that. And we have samples of that that are in our uh, exhibit area at the ICC. And it has been actually a showstopper. Many people inquire, how come you have a painting on rotten wood? You know, it's wood that looks like, you know, um, masyadong luma. And then when you explain to them, then, ah, there's, there's a great appreciation for that. And he, he does paint well. And of course, we have uh, Jackie Peñalosa's uh, clothes, which are also very, very beautiful, but I have to say quite expensive. There have been inquiries from people who are interested in procuring, but when we tell, we tell them, uh, this is what it costs, medyo nag uh, twice or three times. Uh, and over and beyond that, we also have the products of the Trappist monks from Guimaras, the mangoes, which are very, very, uh, which were very well re received. And then uh, bits and pieces you know, of houseware and uh, gift items and uh, wearables like bags. Uh, it has attracted a lot of attention. And so we are very, very grateful you know, to the support we got uh, from the locals. Uh, from your local government unit as well, from the tourism office, in helping us put this up. Because it, if it has been truly educational for me, I think it will be truly something that will also be appreciated by our foreign guests. Thank you so much, uh, Director Leano. So how do we look at this SME now? So we have a lot of F SMEs now who, are, who can actually compete globally. Mm -hmm. But how do we see them in the next years to come? So we have the big companies there already in the region that we, they're already established in the region, but how do we see the um, small, medium enterprises entering or um, establishing themselves in the region? So um, to answer this, to give his insights on this, we have um, Professor Clarete. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that's a very interesting question because uh, this concept, promoting this concept about uh, value chains and uh, the partnership between large enterprises at saka yung mga small and medium enterprises, that I think is the future. Uh, it's not going to be that they are, will be competing with one another. They will be cooperating with one another to develop uh, new products and to develop more values to existing products. SMEs are largely in, this, in these sectors. One, agriculture, uh, food products, processed food products, uh, handicrafts. Uh, these are some of the uh, uh, industries that we need to promote and uh, grow in, in our country. And uh, these are needed. This can be exportable, not just here domestically. And uh, that's where we need this partnership between large enterprises who are able to break through in export markets. Our SMEs needs to understand that there's going to be a lot of disciplines that they have to absorb, innovations in their particular way of managing their business in order to produce the kinds of products that the international markets are going to appreciate and therefore buy. But to me, I think the future is there. And that is also the future for our uh, Philippine economy because the way to develop our economy is to really involve and include as many small and medium enterprises as possible. Okay, that's good to hear. And um, since they're a big part of the economy, they constitute more than 90% of the economy, not just in the Philippines, but uh, in the region. So in the Philippines, how do we assist them? So we have the DTI, who's um, a part of the government, who assists these uh, small and medium enterprises. How do we assist them? Um, in terms of development, um, with us, um, perhaps uh, Director Rebecca can um, uh, give her insights on this, on how uh, we assist them from development to promotion, to promoting the the small and medium enterprises from the perspective of the region where she is coming from, which is Region Six. Yeah. Good afternoon. So the micro, small, and medium enterprises now are dispersed all around the region. Uh, for in this case, Region 6, so we have the six provinces of Aklan, Antique, 
Capiz, Iloilo, Guimaras, and the recently uh, the one that became part of NIR, that's Negros uh, Occidental. So how do we assist the small and medium enterprises in the region? Uh, DTI has various uh, programs to assist them, and this includes the SMERA, or the Small and Medium Enterprise Roving Academy. Uh, we also have the shared service uh, facility. We also have bottom-up budgeting. This is in tandem with the uh, Department of Interior and local government. And uh, uh, specifically, we bring the products to the market through the exhibits and the shows that we conduct either locally or in Manila. So as what Director Dodit has mentioned, uh, in this case uh, for APEC, we also support the micro, small, and medium enterprises by uh, mounting the Panubli on festival that's in SM City. And uh, I can say that, uh, like Director Dodit, I'm also surprised you know, about how the products all over the region has developed. Uh, before, what you can see are, uh, are just cocoa shell, but now they are developed into beautiful uh, products that's being made by Atis or Atas no, in Gimeras. And uh, the trapeze products have evolved also uh, into what we call competitive packaging you know, uh, that can be um, sold not only in the local, but also can be exported. So that's how we assist the clients. Um, from identification of raw materials that can be manipulated and uh, manufactured into new designs, new products, or we improve the existing lines. But uh, DTI, of course, is not working alone. We work with other departments of government like the Department of Science and Technology. We have the Design Center of the Philippines to assist us in coming up with new designs of the products. We also employ private designers that uh, whose expertise may not be found um, in the DCP or DOST. Thank you, uh, Director uh, Rebecca. Um, uh, we promote the SMEs in, in regional fairs. So uh, how do we also promote them on the national level? I think Dodid uh, Leano would can, mm -hmm. can, uh, can add on this because there are um, promotion efforts coming from the region and the province, but we also have, uh, in DTI, we also have uh, promotion efforts mm -hmm. on the national scale. Yeah. So can you um, discuss this? Uh, the way we operate in DTI is we have a ladderized system of developing our SMEs. No? If they are basically startups, usually their operations are confined to a very small geographic area. And we start by assisting them, by giving them product development assistance, uh, teaching ha them how to register their enterprises, also mentoring them on the right way of running a business. No? And uh, as they grow bigger, uh, we graduate them through various levels of trade fairs. So the smallest trade fair, fairs are those that are mounted by our provincial offices. So uh, we have these provincial trade fairs. But we, if we feel that they are ready to cater to bigger markets, then they go up to a regional trade fair. And these trade fairs may be mounted either in the regions or they can be brought to Manila, depending on the sophistication of the products that are already developed. Then if we see that the volumes are there, the standards are there, the quality is there, they actually get kicked up to a higher level. You are probably familiar with the Sikat Pinoy National Trade Fairs. Then we bring them up to the level that those are the kinds of fairs that my office manages. And that means no, they are uh, ready to become truly competitive. They're just a little step beyond becoming a direct exporter. No, because some of them are not really interested in becoming direct exporters, but they are interested in uh, uh, pr providing the necessary requirements of consolidators or other direct exporters. But if they themselves feel that, yeah, we want to export, we want to go into the export market, then we graduate them 
we actually urge them to consider joining fairs that are mounted by Manila Fame, by the Center for International Trade Expositions and Missions. But as they go through these various levels of development, no, we, we give them also the commensurate kind of assistance that, that, that they may need. We don't leave them alone. No, we, This is a, a lot of nurturing and hand-holding that we do with them. Because at the end of the day, while we may start on the provincial level with 100 enterprises that we are exist, uh, assisting, it may be that at the end of the day, ang exporters dyan, maswerte na po kami if we can come up with about five of them out of 100, a handful, but they really produce world-class products. Ngayon, itong uh, activity natin sa APEC, no? Uh, I am really happy about this opportunity because uh, there is usually very little interaction between SMEs and uh, the buyers or the, the, the buying public, no? And if these SMEs can hear directly people praising their products or saying, yeah, this is really good or this tastes fine, the packaging is excellent, then that is the push that they might need to consider growing themselves. So we want them to have this exposure, which is why I'm very glad that we're having this activity outside of Metro Manila. Usually, yung mga activities ganyan, ano, are confined to Metro Manila, but this time we're bringing our foreign guests to the regions. We're providing them direct exposure to our own SMEs. And uh, our SMEs are happy to receive the feedback because um, merong coming small selling activity that's happening now in ICC, you know, and I was a little shocked. What we are selling there are not expensive items. You no, know? we're selling small packages of uh, this mango bars or whatever. And I was a little taken aback, you no, know? in the short span of time, in the, the cup, first couple of hours when I checked up. So how much have we sold? And then they told me, sold out. We have to call directly to Guimaras for delivery because they sold something like 30,000 plus pesos worth of these uh, mango bars. And one, one package is only 100 pesos. So if they sell 30,000, that's quite a lot of mango bars. That was what I was figuring out. And it's basically just this small exposure na na-encourage natin yung SMEs. They need that. They need that small push. No, because otherwise, if they feel that there's really no appreciation for, for, for the products that they have, no, then they, they, they get very laid back. So we want that exposure. And then, uh, as uh, was mentioned by uh, uh, Dr. Clarete, no, ang nangyayari dyan ngayon, uh, it spurs more business. While the manufacturers get spurred, no? If, if you, you have consolidators and indirect ex, uh, direct exporters seeing that there is a demand for the product, then it spurs more business. It's not just the manufacturers alone, but it's a, an entire value chain that kicks into gear you know, to support uh, the, the promotion and sale of these products. And it's good for the country also. It gives us a, it gives us a reputation as a source of products that are uh, world class. Yeah. Thank you, director. Yeah, I, actually, I'm happy to have one of the products there. I bought one, <laughs> and I'm Ablong. wearing it right now. So um, I, I think this one came from Iloilo. Yeah, that's so, Sablon. Yeah, Sablon. Yeah. So, so with um, we we heard our, our speakers now. Uh, so we have a global perspective. We also have the local and how DTI does in promoting the small medium enterprises locally and um, internationally in, in how it promotes yung, yung products. So now we open the floor for questions from, from you. So can we have the first question? Yes, please. Um, good afternoon. I'm Ray Martis Capel of Panay News. Um, earlier, um, um, SME Working Group Chair John Anderson said that um, women and young entrepreneurs play a tremendous role in the Asia-Pacific economy. So what are the existing and pipeline projects of DTI in both national and, reg and regional levels in promoting these sectors in terms of entrepreneurship? Maybe ma'am Rascon and ma'am can Leanne. answer this. Yeah, can we start with uh, uh, Director Leanio first? Um, I don't know. I thought Beck Beck <laughs> should have been first, no? Because the kind of work I do is highly focused on the promotion 
on uh, marketing, no? marketing of uh, the products, mostly of our SMEs. And as I mentioned earlier, no, uh, we encourage people to go into business. No? Uh, to, to a large extent, we tell them that the resources are all here. The talents are, in fact, all here. And uh, uh, what is uh, very nice about it now no, is that the young people are ready to to consider going to business more than before. Before, uh, for the for young people, I think uh, they they gauge their success, no, on being able to uh, find employment in uh, a multinational corporation. But now, more and more, and I think uh, this will be borne out by the statistics we have in DTI, no, yung mga naga apply for business registration get younger and younger. No, that means uh, the younger they are, people are uh, uh, wanting to start uh, something, something new. And the ideas no, uh, that uh, spur them to go into business are not traditional. Uh, the young people actually know uh, how, uh, what to look for in starting a business. No? Uh, they look for the problem. <laughs> and then afterwards, they make money out of finding a solution to these problems. I think uh, Dr. Clarete will will bear me out, no? Hindi na mostly uh, in the area of manufacturing, no? That's why the service sector is actually also growing, no? Uh, but uh, also for manufacturing, kasi people also now are, in, the young people are innovative, they are creative. Uh, they, I, I am very surprised sometimes uh, when we go through a screening process of products, no, that we are trying to promote. Uh, there are very, very unique uh, items that come to us and uh, sometimes you know I really have to uh, wonder aloud does this make sense because you have uh, some things like uh, uh, mango ketchup <laughs> it's yellow but if you taste it made out of mangoes but if you taste it it tastes like ketchup I said what is this and you know it's it's unique products like that uh, I'm not I'm not uh, uh, I, I never say no to anything because you never know what the market wants there. They want always something new, something unique, no? And uh, it, it, it's those innovations that, that actually strike us. And when we see something like that, you know, uh, DTI goes into gear, like the group of uh, uh, Director uh, Beckbeck uh, will start uh, nurturing this kind of companies. No, because it's very out of the ordinary, and uh, this is exactly what we're looking for. Because uh, the factor of success is how different are you? Because now, if you're just like the rest, it's going to be more difficult for you to keep your niche in the market. And uh, I think what what DTI is um, uh, strong at, no, is that. Um, we we have learned how to listen to our clients. It's not government always say dictating. No, this is this uh, this is what you have to go through. But rather, it's listening to the needs of uh, those going into business and trying to address those needs in the best way uh, that's possible. And uh, sometimes we we really also have to you know tell them we don't think this is going to work. <laughs> You may have a good idea, but I don't think this is going to work. No, and uh, at the end of the day, I think we're doing them a favor, no, more than anything else. But uh, yon, we listen, and then uh, where possible, we'll extend the assistance that's needed. It might not always come from DTI; it may come from the partner agencies, as mentioned by Director uh, Rascon. It could be that we work with DOST or we work with. Uh, uh, the academe, yes, definitely the academe, uh, to 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 find a way, no, by which we can spur the the success of these businesses. Yes, director um, Rascon, can you add on that? Okay. Um, bawat probinsya may iba ibang style or approaches to promote entrepreneurship among the young people. So, uh, in other provinces, uh, we do coordinate or cooperate with the academe. Um, we conduct business plan competition to awaken the creativity of the students to come up with a business plan that they can implement later. In other areas, we conduct entrepreneurship. And then among the mother and, mother and daughter, father and son, <laughs> something like that. No? So, uh, iba iba yung approaches para ma promote yung entrepreneurship. Um, to support that, we conduct yung how to negotiate with buyers, 
how to price your product because karamihan yung mga prices ng products are not competitive. Medyo mahal or it's either mahal or masyadong mura that kung tingnan mo when you review uh, the composition of the price, hindi yun ang tamang pricing. So we are teaching the entrepreneurs, the young students also how to price correctly the product. And then, uh, sa product development, we assist them in trying to be creative para yung mga available raw materials all over the region, magawa ng paraan para maging magandang produkto after, no? So, all over the region, marami tayong mga, mga materials, no? In fact, uh, talking of value chain, mas magandang example yung Nito uh, product uh, ng Aklan, uh, wherein yung isang exporter has hit the international market. And down the line, maraming nakabenepisyo no? na mga weavers, in, even in the barangays. There are those who uh, go to, you know, uh, Nito is a minor forest product. Uh, they procure the materials up there sa bulubunduking bahagi ng aklan, and the, they bring that to the exporter. Uh, somebody has to do the weaving, somebody has to finish it, dress it up, and then bring that to the market. So, kung tingnan mo, maraming na involved sa industry, and that's how uh, effective yung approach ng value chain or industry clustering. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Clarete would like to add on yes. that. Uh, yes, if I please. may, I, um, <clears throat> I think it's also very important to use... Uh, this uh, in information technology in order to spur uh, ideas uh, for, um, for from among our youth. No, uh, Yesterday, uh, the Pan-Asian uh, uh, exchange was uh, officially launched. Uh, what this is basically is an electronic platform whereby uh, entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs can look at uh, the kinds of uh, products that are being bought in the market. And uh, it promotes the uh, uh, matching of uh, suppliers, uh, of SMEs, and then the buyers. And it was very well packaged that uh, it, it touches also on the aspects of financing, how to reduce the risk. And I think this is the kind of tools that uh, <clears throat> DTI is also supporting in order to uh, basically uh, encourage uh, more ideas among our youth, um, our young entrepreneurs, in order to think of what kind of businesses they may want to go into. Secondly, the partnership of uh, academe, this is another area, academe, the private business and government, is very important because uh, the kinds of us, uh, uh, successes in businesses can then be used as a training platform material in order to train other entrepreneurs how to uh, succeed in this kind of business. Uh, the help of government in promoting this kind of programs using, for example, uh, for example, university, we have this Institute of Small Scale Industries. We are conducting this kind of training for young entrepreneurs. This can be replicated in other parts of the country because uh, the young entrepreneurs have the ideas, but they need to be assisted how to grow those kind of ideas into something that is really commercial, uh, ready for co commerce. And uh, the innovations can also be introduced by, through research. Uh, maybe we can do it this way because that's, that's the way to go. I mean, we are successful if we have attractive products, products that are very uniquely ours, and that is our source of our comparative advantage over other countries, no? And the, the design that is very unique, uh, those are some of the important sources of advantage that we need to tap. And then, of course, how to reduce our costs in order to make our uh, products more com competitive. And this is a lot of things to do as far as the government is concerned because much of our cost may be due to some of the regulatory problems that uh, small and medium enterprise face. We really need to have more efficient policies 
and better enforcement of our policy so that the costs of doing business is going to be low. Thank you, Professor. Can we have the second question, please? Um, a girl in black and blue, black and blue. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Mads Miraflor of Manila Bulletin. Uh, it was mentioned earlier by Professor Clarete that uh, in terms of globalizing SMEs, uh, the way forward is to uh, is for SMEs to establish partnership with large companies. Um, as of now, how will you describe the synergy between large companies and SMEs here in the country? And could you give us example where an SME or where a large company partnered Success successfully partnered with a, with an SME. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Professor, please. Yeah, I think uh, if you look at, for example, our Jollibee, okay, mm -hmm. where do they get their uh, sources of uh, uh, vegetables for their uh, fast food? They get this from our farmers. Our farmers are, of course, our small and medium enterprises. And uh, that partnership has been there already. Uh, and uh, what we, uh, San Miguel Corporation is another large enterprise that is also uh, uh, linking with our farmers in, um, uh, in chicken and, uh, and other products. Uh, so in process, f because they are processing uh, foods, no? So that's there already. And I think we need more this kind of partnerships. Eh? Uh, and then, I mean, the small and medium enterprise do not have the scale, okay? They need to be organized, they need to be, uh, uh, there has to be training so that they understand what kind of products they are going to be, because it should be homogeneous product and the standard would meet the requirements of the market. The big brother, uh, the, the, the large enterprise, uh, understand the importance of this kind of standards and they need to be doing this kind of training it's not just the government who will do, they can do it on their own. And the farmers are going to be uh, assisted in understanding the importance of complying with these standards, that the regulations that they need to follow so that uh, the products are really what the market demands. So that's the partnership. Now, a government will have to look also because there are some things that the infrastructure, energy costs, I mean, those are some of the policies that the government can help out so that, that that partnership between the large enterprise and the small enterprise are going to really grow. So it's really this uh, cooperation among uh, the stakeholders, including the government, that is needed in order to make this happen. Okay, can we have the next question? Yes, please. Good afternoon. I'm Joyce Balancho from UNTV. My question is for our DTI officials. So, uh, ma'am, you've mentioned about some of our Iloilo products being displayed around the airport area as well as the International Convention Center. Do we have like an exact figures um, of the sales right now? How much has been generated from the exhibits? And also, if you can share a story, probably what you've heard or what was uh, told by the delegates about Iloilo products. Thank you. Every day we do monitor the sales, but right now I don't have a figure of how much no, since it was opened on the 21st. But um, just this afternoon, we asked uh, from Aklan, no, an exhibitor from Aklan, we wanted to buy Barong for uh, a gift to a DTI official. And uh, she said, actually a DTI uh, uh, account officer namin, ang nagsabi na naubusan ng barong. Yung dala niya na 20, naubos na. So they have to buy from Aklan again and then uh, we're going to get it tomorrow. And also, uh, some of the delicacies no, from Gimaras, naubos na rin. So that's it. But uh, I think I will have the figure this afternoon of how much is the sales for today and a consolidated report since it opened last September 21. At least, ma'am, kahit yung mga previous days that you were able to monitor uh, the sales, like an average lang po per day, kung may naalala pa po kayo. Um, 
Yeah, probably um, you can uh, give your number later to yeah, directors. Oh, I, I will ask she can, them. Okay. Will yeah, ask she, them. she can um, communicate with you the results for the day, kung magkano okay. yung nabenta for the day. Yeah. So, yeah, you have a follow-up question? Uh, no. Thank okay. you. Both. Thank you. And then, can we have the next question here? Good afternoon po. I am Runji Hamolo of Radio Nang Bayan Ililo. I'm uh, addressing this uh, question to Professor Clarity, please. Um, while we have beautiful handicrafts in Iloilo, well, it also commands a high price. Uh, and right now, in downtown stores or in the malls, we find um, several g gift items made of, from China and uh, from Taiwan. Is this good for our economy? Um, can you expand this, sir? Yes, Professor, please. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, well, we can actually sell our product that as high as being handicrafts, no? Made, made uh, uh, exquisitely by our own. China kasi is actually mass producing mm -hmm. their own handicrafts. And well, that is, there's an advantage there, okay? And, uh, oh, I forget is to say, uh, these uh, gift items from China are at a lesser cost. Are, no, sorry. At less cost. Lesser lower cost. cost nga, a lower cheaper. cost, yeah, yeah. That's because uh, when you start mass producing, you can actually bring down the costs of uh, some of these handicrafts, no? But uh, there's an advantage there. The advantage there would be that you can serve a wider market, no? Ang order ng mga export uh, markets would really be. Uh, uh, more than what we are used to in the domestic trade, no? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you, you lose the differentiation of each of the product, and it's, a, it's just a matter, it's a, a matter now of how entrepreneurs, our entrepreneurs will look at it, no? They can continue to have these uh, separate products that are produced differently, but then market that as it's a little bit higher because it's, it's kind of unique, every product. That's one advantage that we can count on, no? Mm -hmm. But in the end, I think we really have to also look at if the market becomes see really so large, and that is, that is what China is facing, we can also look at how we can bring down our costs through scale. As, as you have more scale, you bring down the costs. But then you sacrifice now the differentiation. But if we put premium on differentiation, then we attach a higher price. So it's different now to what market we are selling. So that means, sorry, we're targeting two different markets. Yes. So yes. it's not really a competition between China and uh -huh. the Philippines in terms of product market. But we could also compete with China if we want to go into the other market of you know, mass, mass, mass producing this. And that's where we need already, and you know, organ organizing our small and medium enterprises better because the supply chain needs to be more uh, expansive. No, mm -hmm. kagaya ng dinis ni director, uh, kailangan na nawawala na, nauubusan na sila ng mga, in, mga materials to to sell. No, so that 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 to me displays that the supply chain is not as efficient yet. Siguro because this is really an off and on market. But once we are in the regular uh, business of selling this in the export markets, then our horizon is be becomes larger and larger. And we need to adjust to that in order to become competitive. Also, on a related concern, uh, I don't know kung si, doc, si Director Lian yung maka uh, pag uh, sagot nito. Dahil din kasi po, so, uh, ma'am, um, some producers are quite adamant about uh, pushing their products or bringing them to the malls or pushing for promotions because it would also command some price and at the same time not be uh, would quite uh, no it would not be patronized by uh, by some so uh, ano po bang maari nating mai mai advice uh, is there some sort of changing some mindsets of our small or micro uh, entrepreneurs? Uh, definitely, definitely. You know, uh, actually uh, developing products is always, there's always a risk involved there, no? And uh, what we're teaching our SMEs is to be, uh, 
to learn how to listen or to pay attention to the, what the buyers want. Uh, as a manufacturer, uh, sometimes you're focused on certain things, no? How to produce it at the least possible cost. You know, you have your own, you have your own considerations. And when you bring this to the market, you eventually find out it's not exactly what the market wants. Now, as the as the maker of the product, it's really up to you, no? If you want to get your foot in, then you just have to pay attention to what your buyers want because it doesn't work the other way around. No, you can't ram it down the throat, ram your product down the throat of your intended buyers, because they will buy what they want to buy. They will look, let's say, for value for money. No, and uh, also taking off from what uh, the professor uh, mentioned earlier, no, uh, I'd like to say na kuminsan, uh, yung mga, how do I put this um, tactfully? <laughs> kuminsan yung mga, mga SMEs natin, ano, um, uh, what they are looking at really is trying to make the most at uh, with, with the least effort. It doesn't work like that in business. You have to exert a lot of effort no, into developing a product that will actually address the needs of your buyers. And once you have a success product, you shouldn't uh, just lay your laurels down on that. It's continuous innovation because you know it's a free market enterprise. Now you have a success product in six months. You know China can easily buy a sample and then they will replicate that. No, and then uh, na, the uniqueness of your product is no longer there. No, then you have to innovate again and again and again. It's a continuous process. It doesn't mean that once you you have this. That's, that's, that's what's going to make you. Hindi po ganun. That's what we tell our SMEs. You have your success product now, but in three months, be sure China is going to have their own version of that much cheaper, probably not as classy, no? but uh, it's going to be there. So that's what we tell our SMEs. Depende din eh. Uh, sa mercado din na gusto mo ihit. No? Like what we figured out in DTI, it's very difficult to compete it's a cheap products, some mass produced products. Uh, I can almost say we'll never win against China. So uh, the approach really that we have in DTI you know, is that we are not niching ourselves sa low end, nasa medium end tayo or high end. And we are, we're capitalizing on the fact that we're known as the Milano Fascia. So we always come up with the best designed products. We try to keep it up to global standards. You know, kasi at the end of the day, mass produce, kaya you have to sell a lot, kasi mura siya. But if you have a good product with high standards, you might probably not have to sell as much, but you can earn as much or may maybe earn even more because you're pay paying for the, how do you say, it's, it's, it's the creativeness that you're paying for. It's the design you're paying for. So, depende, depende yan. Nasa, we never make the decisions for the enterprise. Depende sa kanila. No? Pero sinasabi namin, kung low-end ka, mas mahirap ang kayod niyan. You have to really uh, manufacture millions and millions in order for you to, to, to uh, earn a lot. Pero kung high-end ka, maybe you make one or two or three, and you will earn as much as somebody selling a thousand cheap products. Okay, thank you. Can we have the last question, please? Last question. Yes, please. Good afternoon. I'm Bombo Janus Banyas of uh, Bombo Radio Philippines. For Director Lianio, ma'am, in the Philippines, many are hes hesitant to do business or improve their existing business due to taxes incurred. Is this high time to change policies with regards to, to taxa taxation or past laws to protect or promote our uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises? You know, that's a very sensitive subject. <laughs> and it's not uh, something uh, I am uh, yeah. knowledgeable enough to discuss. I think it's uh, people in the higher levels of government that can uh, actually address that question of yours. Okay. Thank you. And uh, everyone, thank you for coming. Um, I'd like to announce that there will be no ambush interviews on the side. We will be preparing for the next uh, um, press briefing. So thank you so much for coming and good afternoon.